we're still in the early stages yet as far as you know, what started it. Four bear come out of the swamp. Those four bear followed Fortune's scent. Two of them tried climbing this ladder up to him. Something to, that has to be remembered each and every year. It's a bold move going bald. I, I like my hair and so does everybody else. And like, I'm the only guy here with the fro. Fro no more, Max Miller's hair ended up in a pile on the floor. My grandma has cancer and I thought it'd be pretty cool to support something like this. Miller and around 35 others are supporting the St. Baldrick's Foundation and Childhood Cancer Research. And my hair was kind of long anyway. Sisters Grace and Faith also made the bold move, but with brave faces, they say it's not so bad. I wanted to do it because I care about kids who have cancer and I want them to have a cure so they can get better. In fact, Faith says she likes the new look. Um, I'm pretty happy about it and I can't wait to show everybody what I've done today and just really wish I could have fun with it. Laura Hotelling is a teacher at Gaylord High. She's also a mom. No parent should ever have to watch their child suffer. No parent should ever lose a child. She personally raised more than $2,000, and all these bald heads represent more money for the foundation. I had a lot of support and uh, a lot of people coming up and backing me. We all, we all hope that she's in a better place now. One by one, lighted balloons were released over Grand Traverse Bay. They symbolize Carly Lewis leaving her friends and family behind, but they'll never forget. There's something unbelievable about that girl and her spirit is sweet. And I love her to death. She's my sister and I always will. Hundreds came together at the open space to remember the life of Carly and what would have been her 17th birthday. Between the tears, there are happy memories. I still remember as the sassy little girl who was always carrying a cat in her arms. Uh, <laughs> there's no end to the amazing memories we've had. I mean, some frightful. <laughs> I mean, she was, she was a girl full of life. Her family says Carly was special to so many people, and this crowd is a testament to that. I've heard that there's, on average, 50 people. A person is able to maintain 50 healthy relationships, she managed to maintain hundreds. She was really, was a really happy person. And she's always kind to everyone. She's like really outgoing. She's like the life of the party. She's a really cool girl. Her family says this helps with the mourning process and letting go of any negative feelings. To Jensen's family, we're not angry. We, we don't hate you, we don't, especially, we don't especially don't hate Jensen, I mean, we, we love you and, I mean, we're not carrying any bitterness at all, we're forgiving you. And friends, thoughts and prayers go out to the loved ones Carly left behind. All the love and care and all the prayers go to her and her family, hope she has a good birthday. Reporting in Traverse City, I'm Jennifer Prophet for Michigan This Morning. When you hold up the filter, it shouldn't look like this. If it's clean, you can see light through the filter. What he did see, he almost didn't believe. And I hollered my brother, bring me your spear. <laughs> Angering some people who are working together to keep the train rolling. By the time the sun comes up at U.S. Coast Guard Station Manistee, crew members are already preparing for the day. It begins with the crew uh, coming down 0700 in the morning and uh, starting the outfit list checks for the boats. Manistee is a small boat station, different from an air station. Before a lot of people even finish their first cup of coffee, crew members are checking and rechecking this 47-foot motor lifeboat. Basically going down to the vessels, making sure that they're running fine. My role would be to check oil levels, checking parameters. On a typical day, they'll maintain their boats and train for search and rescue situations. Crews begin with a briefing in quarters. 
that's command's chance to give us what they expect, what they want us to see, or if there's anything that they want us to see coming up. On today's agenda, helicopter training with Air Station Traverse City. Heel ops is 0930. So it has to be, you know, second nature to us. Like, like we're doing it all the time, and that's why we do do it all the time. We train just so that we can get there, get the job done, get out as safely and effectively as we can. First, it's time to suit up and make sure everyone's on the same page. Crew fitness? I feel good. Climate's one. Oh, yeah. You guys ready to go? Right. Once the crew knows what's going on, it's time to set sail. Test throttles. All right, clear them eye. One's clear. Three, four, four. Three, three, four, four. Close it. What's going to happen is we're going to go out, um, helicopter will come on scene, usually they'll make a couple passes to the water. The rescue boat sails out onto Lake Michigan and waits for the helicopter to fly in from Traverse City. Got Elo. Coming up. Starboard side. Within minutes, it's hovering overhead. They'll approach our boat. They'll probably be about 20, 30 feet off, off of our mast in the back and they'll drop a basket to us. About twice a week, Station Manistee and Air Station Traverse City team up and they bring their helicopter over here, fly it overhead and practice lowering and raising the basket just like a real life emergency situation. It's kind of follows along the saying, if you don't use it, you lose it. It's to just maintain as proficient as you can be at any, at any one of the skills. Once the helicopter is in place, everyone gets into position. practice tossing down and catching the basket. This is one of the most dangerous things they'll do and people rarely get to see it. Training the crew and watching them, they're just their faces when they come back for uh, the reward of doing that job and serving the public and making sure somebody comes home to their wife, children, and so forth. It's just there, there's no other reward in my opinion. If a survivor's injuries are too severe, the helicopter flies them to a hospital faster than the boat can. We will be searching the same area different with, in, in differing ways. Um, they may be able to see something that we can't. They might be able to hear something, obviously, that we can't. So by working together on a search and rescue case, um, we can you know, make a, a good combined and, and uh, solid effort. Though search and rescue is their claim to fame, they do so much more than just that. We're basically overall responsible for everything. Obviously, the execution of uh, our mission, search and rescue, law enforcement, homeland security, uh, to pollution response. It all boils down to their motto. Two simple words describe the heart and soul of any Coast Guard station. Semper Paratus, always ready. For us to be there, I think, gives them a little bit more safety. For us, we love doing it. Reporting at Station Manistee, I'm Jennifer Prophet for Fox 32 News.